Hi everybody, so we've been playing around with this idea of fluorescence and trying to get fluorescence to uh, improve the output of a solar cell. And you might notice I'm holding a bit of a branch and that's not because I'm worshipping Bacchus and I've gone to my original Greek origins. It's because everybody knows chlorophyll fluoresces. If you extract chlorophyll, put it under UV light, it'll fluoresce in red, which is pretty cool, really. And of course, it gets you thinking, can we do that? Would that do anything? Could we extract the chlorophyll, stick it on a solar cell and see if there's any kind of improvement or not? So extracting chlorophyll, luckily, is an absolute piece of cake. All you really do is get a bunch of leaves, tear them up, put them into a beaker and add some isopropanol alcohol and leave it for a bit. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So after half an hour of waiting and a bit of filtering with a coffee filter, we get our chlorophyll. Now, there's two types of chlorophyll in here, actually. It's chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And there's another pigment called xanthrophyll, which is a more ancient pigment. Mostly we've got chlorophyll in here. Now, the chlorophylls live in something called a chloroplast, which is a structure inside the plant cell. And chloroplasts are actually remarkably similar to our own mitochondria. The mitochondria in our cells break up food into carbon dioxide and energy and we breathe out the carbon dioxide. The chloroplasts in plant cells take in carbon dioxide and water, create sugars and give out oxygen. So there's quite a bit of complementary systems going on there. But it only works if there's the chloroplast structure because the chlorophyll B takes in the energy, passes it down to chlorophyll A, it passes it down the chloroplast structure and that's how we get photosynthesis. With the chloroplast gone, it can't do that, but it still takes in the light and it reaches an excited state. It gets more excited than Luke when he's done a particularly good video and that excitation, of course, fades out and when the electron drops back down, the light is given back out. But a phase shift has, has occurred. It takes in UV light and gives out red light, which is brilliant because solar cells can't use UV, but they can use red. So we should be able to get something out of this solar cell by basically painting it with a bit of chlorophyll. Now then, we've got a little setup here. We've got ourselves a voltmeter reading voltage and I've got this, which is a um, solar cell from Radio Shack that I bought about a million years ago. So it's not brilliant, but it still works. And on that, we're going to put a bit of our chlorophyll. But of course, we can't just put the chlorophyll on there because it's in alcohol, so it's going to evaporate at a rate of knots. So I've got a sheet of plastic to stop that evaporation rate going on. But when the light hits the plastic, it's going to hit two surfaces. And whenever a light hits a surface, it bends and dissipates and some is lost. So we're going to put some alcohol on here, some IPA on there, to reduce that to one surface. Then we can add that and we get a fair test. I've also got a camera set up on the um, voltmeter so you can see the effect that it has. Anywho, let's get on with that. Okay, so here is the bare cell, and that's the reading on the bare cell. If I put my bit of plastic on it, then obviously you notice the reading drops, because we've just covered it over, basically. What I'm going to do is put a bit of IPA on there, a bit of isopropanol alcohol, and that will form like a window between the two, bit, uh, bit, two bits of plastic and the surface of the cell, and we should get a better reading when we do that, because now we don't have as much in the way of reflection and refraction between those two surfaces. Okay, so that is our baseline. What we're going to do now, <laughs> just love this stuff. Uh, yeah, we're going to put a bit of our chlorophyll on there and see what happens. And there we go! <laughs> That's actually quite awesome! <laughs> okay, so, chlorophyll will improve the output of a solar cell, but it's not ideal, obviously. I mean, we, we had to put the plastic on because we've used alcohol, and of course that's just going to evaporate. And chlorophyll is an organic mo molecule. So it will break down over time. I'm not actually sure how quickly it's going to do that. But interestingly enough, a layer of chlorophyll, which is a phosphorescent material, over a solar cell 
will in fact improve its output and its performance. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.